The wheat we're eating is not the wheat we ate. It's not the bread of our ancestors, which has many more proteins that create inflammation that are gluten proteins. It also has a much higher starch content. In fact, two tablespoons of sugar raises your blood sugar less than two slices of whole wheat bread. So we now know that the kind of wheat we're eating is very inflammatory, that we know that this can disrupt the gut lining. So looking at celiac disease, 50 years ago, they had blood samples on 10,000 people looking at celiac disease, and they compared it to a blood sample of 10,000 people today, and there was a real increase of 400% in celiac disease. So this is not a fad. This is a real phenomena that's a result of the increased use of antibiotics, the lack of breastfeeding, the processed food, and the chronic stresses, environmental toxins, all colluding to drive disruptions in the gut function, which allows the gluten to actually break through and create the systemic inflammation. Dr. Holland and Fasano at Harvard published a study that shows when humans eat wheat, every human that eats wheat, not just the celiacs, but every human that eats wheat gets tears in the inside lining of the gut every time they're exposed to wheat. We now know through clinical research, it is an absolute that autoimmune disease begins in the gut. Just as Hippocrates said over 2,000 years ago, all disease begins in the gut so does autoimmune disease. So with autoimmune disease, here's really how it works is, there's a barrier in between your bloodstream and your intestines, it's called your gut lining. And your gut lining has microscopic, these little holes in it. What can happen over time if somebody has intestinal inflammation, large holes open up in your gut lining. Some cells turn over very quickly, like the inside lining of the gut, every three to seven days, you have a whole new lining to your gut. It's like the skin of a snake, just kind of sheds right off. So you had toast for breakfast, it heals. You have a sandwich for lunch, it heals. Pasta for dinner, it heals. Croutons on your salad, it heals. A cookie, but it heals day after week, after month, after year, after year, after year, until one day you don't heal anymore. Now, when you don't heal, that's pathogenic intestinal permeability. And these tears can occur and stay torn uh, when you lose tolerance and you don't heal anymore when you're two years old, 22 years old, 72 years old. It just depends on when you cross that threshold as to when this happens, but it happens. So what can happen now is undigested food particles such as gluten, casein, toxins, bad bacteria, candida, can leak from the intestines into the bloodstream. Your body says those shouldn't be here. It starts this immune response. And if that isn't corrected over time, what can happen is it starts autoimmune disease. And it can affect, uh, that systemic inflammation can affect the joints causing rheumatoid arthritis. It can affect the thyroid causing Hashimoto's thyroiditis. It can affect the colon causing things like Crohn's disease or the muscles causing fibromyalgia. So really, all autoimmune disease is first caused by leaky gut. It starts in the gut lining. You know, I really believe the biggest factors that are causing this gut reaction are number one, it's certain foods, refined grain products. Uh, sugar is a big one. Sugar feeds candida and yeast in your body, which causes this issue. Genetically modified organisms, they're wired with pesticides and viruses, which kill off beneficial microbes in the gut, causing leaky gut and autoimmune disease. Also looking at hydrogenated oils. Uh, artificial sweeteners are a big one. All of these things contribute to leaky 